one of the other parts to post-flight analysis is the ability to look at things from a very, very visual perspective. So a couple ways to do that. One is to use what we call the heat map. So let me uh, reset my filters here a little bit. So instead of last 90 days, I will set this to all time. So now I'm looking at 132 flights. Now, if I want to see where these are graphically on a map, so in the upper right hand corner, there's an icon that is called the place mark icon, or in this case, kind of put stuff on the map icon. It's blue. I tap on that, and now you see all the airports that you've flown to during that time period. They're color coded, green, good, red, bad. So the single most common airport that I've flown to, um, this is actually based on some imported logbooks, is this airport here. It's green, so it's K-E-X-X. -X. There's only one of those, so this shows you instantly where your most common airport is. Then oranges and yellows are below that, and ones that you've only flown to a couple of times are in red. As you zoom out, though, notice what happens. The, so right now you can see the individual airports. As you zoom the map out, it turns into colored regional balls. This is what we kind of mean by heat map. So for example, let's go maybe someplace a little bit closer to home. So if I take a look at this, as I zoom into the Seattle area, I begin to see airports, uh, for example, Renton or SeaTac or S-43 Harvey Field and so on. Now, where this is kind of cool is if you want to know more about the flights that you took to S-43. So again, there are two of them listed here. If I simply tap on that airport icon here, it immediately goes back to my flights list, but it shows me only the two flights that had something to do with S-43, either as takeoff or as landing. It doesn't really matter. So that's a very, very easy way to graphically find where you've flown and to then look in more detail at the flights um, from those areas. Also notice on the Flights tab, there's a play button. That's a blue triangle shape there. If I tap on that, then what happens is the system, I'm gonna, by the way, go in and turn off what we call the logbook layer, which is the heat map layer. And now we are watching detailed playback of that flight. You can control the playback in a couple of different ways. So now we're looking at it in a 2D view. You can also see it in 3D by hitting the cube icon, like that then tap the cube button twice more and you get back to the uh, list, uh, rather you get back to the 2D view, like that. Okay, but that's on 2D and 3D. For that matter though, you can hit the split screen button in the upper left corner of the screen and why not? You can display it both in 2D and 3D at the same time and FlyQ has always had a built-in simulator. So if you tap any of the five buttons in the upper right corner, what we call the status area, think of it as one gigantic button. You have a series of tabs like weather information and ADSB and flight recorder, but the GPS also doubles as turning the simulator on. So I can, t I can move anywhere, I can scrub my position to anywhere in the flight just by moving this little slider, very easy to do. Or I can even move the speed. The default is real time, but I can move that slider to as fast as I want this is what we call the warp factor switch. So now we're moving at 10 times normal speed in both 2D and in 3D view. And again, you can bring that to any spot in the flight. If you want to see what it was like a little bit before landing, you can do that as well. Or I guess this, there you go, just like that. So now we're moving along and we should be coming in for landing looks like in a few minutes. All the time that you do this, by the way, take a look at the gauges on the top bar. They show you what your actual altitude was, your ground speed, your track, and so on and so forth. So this really is like playing black back the flight in a very, very simple, very easy to understand way. Another way to analyze your flight though, I'm just gonna go back to my flights tab on this side of the screen and pick a particular flight. So again, this is the one that we were looking at before. So if I tap on that, of course I can look at it this way. But there's also an analysis tab. Let's actually simply go back to single screen. So on the analysis tab, so every flight has you know the basic map and it shows you where you flew. It has the data entry fields that you'd expect, it has all your photos if you add a photo, and then it has analysis. The analysis tab has three graphs in it at the moment. There'll be more later when we begin to import engine analysis data from uh, other systems. But if you tap on one of those, it shows you a very detailed graph there's a green, the green area represents your altitude and feet. And then the blue area talks about your ground speed. That's the blue line. 
So as you can see, that your speed is changing as you're going up, your speed decreases, not a real shocker there. And you see what it's like over time. You can imagine what this will be like also, not just with things like altitude and speed um, and so on in time, but have other factors such as engine temperature, such as exhaust gas temperature, such as altimeter readings. I mean, it's all kinds of things that we can do in this once we begin importing data from other systems, and you'll see that very soon.